I'm Brian Kilmeade. This is Keeping Score. Hope you had a great weekend. We're going to talk sports, but let me urge you to watch Fox and Friends every day, 6 to 9. Listen to Kilmeade and Friends, 9 to noon. The game of golf. Yes, the game of golf got the biggest shot on the arm. It's only akin or equal to what Jeremy Lin has done for basketball. It's what Tiger Woods potentially, along with Rory McIlroy, could do for golf. McIlroy, we know about his age. We know about his success. We know about his talent. We know about how he plays in the clutch and bounce back after choking to play so strong. Well, he won the Honda Classic, but that's not what the story ends. To me, it starts with what Tiger Woods did in the final round. He shot almost a career best, 62. He shot a 61 one time, I understand, but this 62 was clutch. He had no holes in his game. He bounced back all the week over the weekend. I watched a lot of his post uh, play interviews, and he sounded very optimistic, looking past some of his problems with putting, and I think it all came together for him with the Honda Classic. What does it mean? It means you might have, he was two shots off the win, uh, uh, off the leader, by the way, comes in tied for second, but you might have a true rivalry with a 35 year old Tiger Woods taking on a 21 year old Rory McElroy. This is something the game would absolutely li live for and have the ratings actually double come the Masters, if Tiger continued to play this good for this long. He looked like the old Tiger Woods. This, according to the golfers he was with and the ones that are playing with him, he had the old punch. Let's talk now about the uh, PGA, who has to be extremely happy, and I'm sure looking at Tiger and his swing coach and saying, please keep it up. Now let's talk about Bounty Gate. In case you do not know, Greg Williams, the defensive coordinator, uh, formerly of the Redskins, now over with the Saints, and he's since left the Saints, been replaced by Spagnolo, who is coaching the Rams. So Williams is in trouble. Not only did he say, players, I want you to take these guys, certain guys out of the game, like Kurt Warner of the Cardinals, now retired, and Brett Favre of the Vikings, now retired. He offered them cash to do so. $10,000, $5,000, $1,000 to knock a player out of the game. Different degrees of unconsciousness got you more and more money. And then you can go review these hits and find out that it did pay off. I know football is a collision sport. I know it is violent by nature, and we're constantly trying to tone it down and pretend it isn't, even though people are paid to be big hitters and to put pressure on the quarterback. And guess what? Hit the quarterback. You cannot offer money to take out the quarterback. And I believe that this punishment will be bigger than anything else in the history of the NFL. Here's what I would do. Greg Williams, you're out of the professional football for five years. I would say to the Saints, you lost four picks, two this year and two next year. And then I would say we're going to review each and every game the Redskins and Saints have played. It's going to take them three months to do it. They're going to look at every single game. They're going to talk to players first and find out what players were actually put on what bounty list. And they will see if there were some cheap shots that cost people their careers and their health and possibly the game. And if that indeed happens, I think that the fine should be even stiffer. But put out the original hit right away. And make it clear, this will not stand. It could potentially destroy the game. Roger Goodell does not take crap, and he won't take it here. What do you think about what I think? Keeping score at foxnews.com. Twitter me directly, twitter.com slash killmeet. I'll see you next time when we keep score together.